things were looking better for her. They wouldn't get her out and get her processed. Sometimes our nights are very hectic, very crazy. A lot of people coming in and it can be a very stressful situation. You've got to just realize that you need to make sure you're calm and able to handle the situations. I mean, we train for this. We have to remember to maintain control. And if we start losing control, then we lose control of the inmates. Why are you waiting here Have you ever been in trouble before? Once. What for? For sure. drugs. And then I took it, I quit doing it. Very innocent, you know. But you're hanging out for own people, so. Yeah. I think. What's your first name? My first name? Christine. Christine? I'm kind of pregnant. So, I'll fix it, I'll fix the chain. Bring it up on the wall. Okay. That one that theme was on all the way down to the very end. What was the story? Hi there. <clears throat> Sorry I took so long to come on. I had a few little hiccups. I had to sort out. Right, tonight we're looking at Sebastian Rogers. Still missing. And they've had a, a prayer vigil for him. And I believe, I'm not sure what time it is, but his father did a short interview. But the uh, guy who's doing the interview said it'll be on the, the full interview will be on the um, 
news at six o'clock on Five News Five or something. So I'm just looking it up now. I'm not going to be able to find it now, am I? It's typical. Do you know, I spent all afternoon sorting this out, and then half an hour before I was due to come on, for some reason, I lost internet on my, on my laptop. I'm thinking, well, I've still got internet because I'm using my TV. I've got internet because I use my phone, and it's connected to my home internet. But would it connect to my laptop? Nope, it would not. I had to do some restart thing on it. And luckily, literally five minutes or so before I was due to come on, I got the internet. And then I had to upload uh, something. That's why I was going to come on just half an hour early before going live to set up all my new little intros I start I've done. And that's what I was doing when I first came up and setting them all up. Anyway, there was an interview by his parents again. But I have looked all over YouTube and I can't find it. I can find it on everyone else's. Everyone else has done it. So I may have to be cheating, just play the sound, not the video. I'll just play the video, but just... So that you can hear the sound, hopefully. So was uh, oh that's it. Yeah, that's the one seven hours ago that was. But look at mind, I saw this interview the other day and I thought and I wasn't going to talk. I wasn't talking about Sebastian that day. I was talking about uh, another case, and I thought I'll go over that. But I and now think I could find it. Nope. So oh no, it is Mister. Pa I've got one here from the Pascal show. Right, but I don't know what everyone's feeling is. Um, hold on, just go to my comment. Hi there, MG. I don't know what everyone's feelings is on this case. I want to stay open minded. My cats are just about to kill each other, so I don't kill them first. <laughs> anyway, so. I want to be on the positive side and not think anything negative. I want to believe with all my heart Sebastian is going to come back home and I'm going to find him he's going to come back home. But it's just them little niggly little things that are getting to me. And um, the fact there was no scent, it doesn't matter where you walk. Like people said, well, could he walk across the neighbor's garden? Yeah. But his scent would be leading from the door. Whatever door he left out of, he'd leave his scent. Even if he walked out the front door and walked over to the curb, like curbside, and got into a car, there'd be a scent. But there isn't. The only scent they've got was just around the house, just basically around the house, like from where they get out their car and walk around to the front door or whatever. I still haven't been able to find out if they had a doorbell camera. Hold on, hold on. I'm just going to kill my two cats. And they've just looked at me now and they've just heard me. They know I'm coming. 
It's all right, I've just fed him. I'm going to go a bit hyper after that being fed. So I'm about to kill him. Get off now. Oh my god, he had a fairy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my God, I'm in this house all day long. I don't get one phone call, one visit, nothing. Then I go live, my internet starts playing up, I'm getting the cats having a two-way scrap, and then I've got my daughter-in-law phoning me up. I go, really? Really? All day you've had this to go wrong on me, and you do it now. Anyway. Sorry about that. I had to put you on mute and put, I just thought I'd just put a bit of music on for you. I should have put a bit of country on for you, shouldn't I? Anyway, we are looking at Sebastian, as I said. And as I said, his parents did give an interview. But they didn't show their faces. Now this is the Pascal show. So he will be popping in at this interview. Right? So I can't help that. It's his, it's his show and I can't help him popping in and out. But Pascal is brilliant. I've been subscribed to him for a while now. So... Let's get on with this, shall we? Uh, we? I hope you all are having a nice day. Um. 
Okay. Yeah, that seems to you I'm on about as well, MG. Um, I seen a little bit of the short version of it, but you said you're doing the full version would be on the six o'clock news. So I don't know what time it is there to us. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's six o'clock there yet. Because it's only just gone quarter past seven here. So it's not going to be six o'clock there yet. So when I do get this, I will just post it either onto my, well, onto my Twitter account, onto my Facebook account. And try and get it posted onto my Instagram if it will let me. So please look at my links. My links will be around my YouTube account. They'll be in the description. If you're on my Twitter, they're on my Twitter account. Okay? Please join me on all of them. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. My Facebook is a new Facebook page. I've only set it up a few days ago. But I've been loading up all my videos onto it. And I'll load more videos as well. Right. Okay, I'll have a look for that, MG. I haven't... I'll have a look. Where did you send it to my Facebook account? Let's have a look. Oh, I've got two messages. Let's have a look. Notification. Yes, I'm just going to confirm it now. Brilliant. Confirmed. So, anyway, this is Pascal. It's really good. And he's very passionate as well. He is very passionate when it comes to the children. So if, if you get to be passionate, enjoy it because it's brilliant. So we we'll start from here. But like I said, something just is not right. Okay, okay. something's <laughs> not percolating right for me. And especially when it comes to this interview. Just to start to silly, yeah. Which we are going to be looking at right now. This is another interview that they did, like I told you guys. They are not seen, so we're going to be listening a lot. But there's things that she's, that they're being said here that are, that are incredibly important as well. Because there's questions that are being asked. There are, there are questions that are being asked that they're not even giving straight answers to. So again, I'm going to say it again. Yeah, MD. Full on Red Flag City in this business. Yes. But let's sit back and enjoy this very interesting interview with hands. Enjoy. Have it on file, just your both your first and last names and spelling. Katie Proudfoot, K A T I E Proudfoot, P R O U D F O O T. Chris, C H R I S, last name's Proudfoot, P R O U D F O O T. So, I mean, first, just as parents, mm -hmm. tell me what the last now over a week has been like for you two. Horrible beyond words. Um, This was an experience that I would have never dreamed would come, honestly. I just, I can't put words to how hard this has been and how much it hurts not knowing where my son is, where, where he's at, if he's okay. It's just horrible is the best thing I can say. What about for you? It's rough. I mean, we are on day 11, no answers. 
and the horrible things that people say you just keep rolling in regardless of taking time to consider the facts and you know assumptions is what they're going off of but you know, for us it's we sit here and we wait no we're not saying horrible things we're just pinpointing the red flags right and you've got to be honest there was no but the facts of the case right is sebastian rogers went missing was on the 25th or 26th of february right fact is autistic so we add another dimension to the search yeah three they did a what a word search found nothing there was no scent there's no video camera no doorbell camera nothing so we're not being nasty we're just saying how can he have just walked out of that house he couldn't have the scent would be there i heard today apparently the dogs picked up on the scent in the garage but not outside the garage because i suppose you come home you drive your car into the garage and you get out in the garage and you use the garage to go to all into the house yep so there'd probably be very minimal centering around the house around the house because we all know he didn't go out he had no friends that's what he wanted for christmas he just wanted friends but you as parents didn't socialize with other children you didn't let him socialize you didn't let him have internet and monitor what he's watching and what he was doing put parental uh guards upon his tablet uh laptop his tablet his phone Christ, that poor lad had, had nothing so we're not being nasty we are just wondering how the hell he got out of that house without leaving a saint and you'll notice they're going to correct themselves on some things you just listen to it oh and can you tell me at the end of this interview just tell me what you notice what you what you hear them say which is different from that first interview they ever did we wait and we wait and hopefully we'll get an answer or hopefully he walks through our door Mm -mm. would be amazing i was going to say how badly do you both want sebastian to just walk through that front door to get that call i'd give anything in a heartbeat i would give anything you know um i, I i'm sorry i i don't mean to be uh mr skeptical um mother lover but i am with these with these types of cases again they this this could could be out there he could be just fine uh, you know what I mean? He could still be alive. He could still be fine for the most part um, and not be in dire straits. Um, but there's still a part of me that thinks, okay, it's been 14 days. It's been about 14 days, if I'm correct. I may be, I may be a day more or a day let, uh, off. But regardless, it's been 14 days. This kid, if he doesn't have the right sustenance, he doesn't have the right stuff, if he's running around here barefoot, and he's only wearing what he wore to go to bed, okay? Uh, it, unless he found shelter and he's in somebody's place where he can get shelter, food, water, especially water, all the sustenance, all the things that he needs, I don't know if we're going to hear uh, a happy ending to this story unless those things are at play, unless he has those things Oh, before we go any further, NG, I'd like to apologise. You was right, his father is in the police force. To show that don't believe everything you read on the internet. Right? <laughs> He's in the police force. Because the weekend, he was, he was supposed to have him one weekend and he couldn't. There's a couple of weekends he couldn't have him because he's down to work. So... Just had to get that in. Accessible. 
But something about this doesn't seem to make any sense. Now, I know the stepdad has some history. And apparently it's very, it's not great. Like I said, history of DV, et cetera. Uh, I think he's going through a, 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 like a court battle right now, now with a past relationship with an ex wife. He has multiple ex wives, by the way. And you know what you showed me? That information I was showing the other night on here. She only put that motion in that, uh, to have a protection order on her children or something like that when Sebastian went missing. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Why would his early ex wife put that order in to have some sort of like protection order put on her children or her child against him? Well, about I think it was three, four days, four or five days after Sebastian went missing. Way as well. Now, to me, it sounds like this guy doesn't have that much of a wick. He doesn't even have a short wick. It just sounds like he may not even have a wick. I think he just is an angry guy. Yep. He's a hothead, it sounds like. If that's the case, then, yeah, I'm looking at the stepdad like a mug. I'm looking at the stepdad like a mug, but at the same time, I know that in some group discussions and some group chats, some of y'all are speculating that it's the mama that has something to do with this. I don't know. It may be both. I, I just don't understand the, like, I'm looking at this right here, like just looking at the hands. Okay. We're, we're, we're listening. To, we are hearing hands speak. Okay. And uh, while I'm looking at this, I'm going, I just could not, be i wouldn't if my loved one did something unthinkable to my own flesh and blood i could not even touch i wouldn't even be i couldn't be in the same room as this with this person so to me it just seems a bit odd that they're to and it's all this like like this understanding right first of all they're doing this interview without showing their faces right whoa People have been going, why, why, why? Because that way, the body language experts can't get to them. But I forget one thing. There's people, and we know one on here, don't we, MG? It's really good at reading words. So he don't need to watch a video. He just needs to listen to them. So that's a big fail there because he'll, he'll watch that interview. He'll watch it. Right? And I'd like to see his response on that interview. He did one the other night on the interview of the other case we've been looking at. Right? And he was spot on again. He was just highlighting what we, pardon me, he was just highlighting again what we've been saying on here from the beginning and he will do the same with these two as well and that's why they don't want to do uh where they want the faces on camera and by having it where it's just hands right last time he showed her no comfort until the end when she turned around and said but they haven't found him yet and he turned around looked at her and he said they will they will by doing that, showing the hands like that, saying, look, we're together, everything's fine. You know what I mean? Not fine. Your son is missing. And it screams the Madeline Soto situation as well, where it was like, clearly to me, uh, uh, Jennifer Soto is going to be under investigation very, very soon, if she's not already, Okay. Um, because I think there's there's definitely something extremely sinister that was going on between pig vomit and J and Jenna, okay? But I feel like something really messed up was going on here as well. Because like I said, why would... If there was something done to this young boy and he did it and she didn't, uh, 
I wouldn't understand her putting her hands on him and giving him love and being caring. I will tell you that. And vice versa. I wouldn't be going, I'll hold it down with you, honey. Hail to the no. I'm not real ride or die if you did something like this. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So to me, it feels, and it sounds so messed up for me to say this, but it feels like this is a joint effort. Okay? We can agree to disagree on it if you if, if you disagree. But I feel like this could have been a joint effort. Clearly, if it's, it, it, it clearly is, if they're sitting here together, willing to have their hands talk right now. Okay? Real quick, I got a couple super chats. Thank you guys so much. Grace Sky Photography, thank you so much for the five. Uh, they, they must have, have solid evidence that they're searching a landfill, especially uh, out of state. Uh, they won't waste money on a hunch. Exactly. And that's that's kind of what I was thinking as well. You know, why would they go spend all time, all of our, you know. The they wouldn't. MG said this to me. They wouldn't because it costs too much. And they have to have probable cause and a good probable cause to get the warrant. Not just, well, we just want to cover our backs. No. They had a reason a good reason for wanting to search that area. Perhaps a tip off. You know what I mean? Someone told them something. But they wouldn't have done it just because they wanted to cover their back. The taxpayers' money to go out there and just start digging through trash. It just doesn't make no. sense. Something told them or gave them a hunch or gave them a, not a, a hunch, but gave them something. To, to motivate them to get their butts out there to do what they did, right? But I think that they stopped, okay? I, I don't think that they're digging through um, the landfill anymore, which is tragic. And this is the reason why he is still out here and no one... Like they only did that search at the landfill one day. After that first day, they didn't go back the second. It was rumored that they was going back the next day, but they didn't go back. One know, knows where he is. I will also say this too. And I know a lot of guys of people have speculated this too. What if daddy, stepdad, I'm so sorry, not daddy, stepdad took this kid, maybe alive, unalive, I don't know, and didn't just dump him somewhere en route to Memphis. Did I not say that the other night? Did I not say that the other night? Now, apparently, he left for work. He, was, he left to go to work, and he was at work when they had that conversation. Right? At half nine. Right? But now, I've heard that he didn't start till the morning. So what time in the morning did you start? And why would you go the night before? Yeah, it's a three-and-a-half-hour trap there. Uh, driving but unless you're married to money you're not going to go the night before and book book into a, a motel somewhere or whatever are you or a hotel whatever you're not going to do that because otherwise the money you're making doing that job you're just going to be spending it on motel uh fees so i can't i don't understand why he's gone down to he wasn't due at work till the next morning. Why did he go down the night before? That's a big question. To his job. Like I said, it, we have to remember that they had, they, it depends on how much time they had between the time that he, but, but between the time that something bad happened and the time that they called the police to say that he was missing. Did they? Did he go? Let me take him. I'm gonna go take care of him. You don't need to know where I take, where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna drop him off, okay? But I'm gonna take care of it. And he just went and took his remains somewhere, without, yeah, without yeah. mommy knowing, maybe. You, you see what I'm saying? But like I said, this this is just all speculation, and these are all the questions that I have because, like I said, this is <sighs> something's not right. Some's just not feeding this is not this, this mm, not right. Debbie, thank you so much for the 10. I really do. Right. Now if even if something happened on the Sunday, right? 
was the stepfather there when they went for their that meal, that lunch? Or had he left to go to Minnesota or wherever it was, or what no, Minnesota? Can't think. Right? Had he left by then? Right? Because it's making me I can't, it's so I'm I'm getting angry again with these people. I'm getting so angry. Because if something happened with him the night before on the Sunday, then it means the mother knows. Because the mother has said he went to bed at nine o'clock. See Pacific this deity said he turned around and said, I love you, or love you, Mum, or something to those words. So if this comes out, which I'm hoping it doesn't, I'm hoping to go out and pray every day. And I'm not a church person, believe me, I'm not. Right? I hope and pray that they find this boy and he is alive. Not for them. Not for them too. But for his father. For his father. It's his father I feel for. Not them. So, thank you everyone from Twitter who's here watching this. Thank you very much. If you want to join me on the chat, please come over to YouTube. My link is there on Twitter. Come over, join us on chat. So, but yeah, MG, I think that is what's happened and I feel bad now because thinking that she had something involved. And why would you wait till 8 o'clock in the morning to phone the police? Um, yeah, 8 o'clock that the police were informed. Isn't it a bit funny? And I wait till 8 o'clock in the morning to phone the police. And Maggie Soto, her mother, waited till 8 o'clock on the night to phone the police. What is it about 8 o'clock? You know what I mean? Because by then, the rubbish bins had all been took, right? And apparently, and you'll hear it in this conversation, but apparently when they phone the police, there's on a three-way conversation. See, they're, they're, they're picking up on what we're saying, right? And now that it's like it's altering it to fit in with their narrative. Oh, yeah, she is, yeah. Yeah, is that um, uh, Magdalene's mum, MJ? She's definitely in the She's She's got, she's just twisted herself. Anyway, but I'm hoping to pray that it didn't go down on a Sunday because it would mean the mother had something to do with it. But they're putting into this, this conversation now they're having they picked up on things that people on YouTube have been saying and now now putting into their narrative but there's one item in here and you leave it and I'll ask you at the end if anyone picked up on it if anyone picked up on it you appreciate the support thank you guys for all this continue guys all right let's 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 rock and roll there's not it's not measurable let's put it that way there's no measurable anybody says all it is you've never sat in these shoes you've never been in this situation mm. and i don't ever wish for people to be in this situation and what what's sebastian like what's his personality like what does he love to do he for the most part is happy he likes to laugh and joke and tell you all about yeah, everything and then some yeah. um he loves games uh he loves video games um hmm. he loves to play with his legos um even building things uh with me we we build little projects here and there but um He's um he's always 
character. Are there any like weird tendencies that he has that might be able to help people find him in this search? I don't know how helpful to finding him, but he fidgets <coughs> constantly. He loves shiny pennies, paper clips. He's always like, uh, whenever we go to the grocery store, um, he always looks looks on the ground and looks under the register counter and he's always looking for shiny pennies everywhere. Um, paper clips. He loves to bend them out of shape and play with them, fidget with them. Um, he loves playgrounds. Um, I mean, we've said it before. He likes fishing and, and things like that, but, um, cats, boy he, loves cats. He does. He hmm. loves cats. So it's, favorite animal <laughs> um i don't know he's just he's a good kid there are no leads nothing caught on yeah that's some that that's what was been bothering me as well the fact from day one it's been said he loves cats yeah, he loves cats. Why didn't I get him a cat instead of a dog then? I got him a dog. He loves a dog. He loves a dog, obviously. But if he loves cats more, why wouldn't you? Would you not get him a cat? Cats aren't as much hassle, believe it or not, because cats go outside and come back and like that. Dogs, you have to get up, physically get up and take them for, and I will, depending on the size of the dog and the energy of the dog, could be anything from a half hour to walk, walk to a two, three hour walk, just to get their energy burnt off a bit. So why would you get him a dog and not a cat? Video, your son has been missing for 11 days now. How does that make you feel as parents? Mm. Here we go. I, I I mean, I don't have words to describe how I'm feeling right now. I mean, I... Every day is harder than the last. I mean, we're out, we're looking, we're... We're trying to make sure that everyone stays looking and doesn't let his face fall to the bottom of a feed or or get covered by some other nonsense. I mean, I just, we just want our boy home. When you walked in Monday morning, and didn't see Sebastian in his room, what was your gut reaction? Mm. My very first reaction was, oh, he got up and got breakfast. <laughs> um, but when I realized he actually wasn't in the house, I've never experienced sheer panic. Now, the thing is though, has he, okay. You know to say that's changed, right? How she's putting more emphasis on her own feelings. How she never felt such sheer panic. She never said that in the first interview. You know what I mean? So they, they've been listening to us YouTubers. And we've all been saying, if that was me, I'd be right frantic. I'd be flipping cupboards out the place, doors off the hinges, everything to find my son. I'd be outside tipping and flipping beans and any canisters I could up and out the way. There's no way it would stop me. Not even the police would stop me from going out and looking for him. No one would stop me. Right? And now they're talking about how, she, how her feelings were, how frantic she was. And they also go on about how they're being out looking. If he's not okay, I get him not being a runner, right? Like he's not one to just like get up and just run and take off, right? Because there, there are, I mean, let's be real, you know, 
for those of us, you know, that have like toddlers and, you know, that kind of thing, the kids tend to just, <laughs> that's a toddler, you know, they just want to run. Right. So this is not like this is a kid who has, uh, who's on, uh, uh, on the spectrum that it's so severe. Okay. That, uh, he just has his impulses. He he just can't control his impulses. And if he just wants to run, he just wants to run. Right. So it's not like that. So to in my mind, I'm like, why would you go into straight sheer panic if he's high functioning? I, I mean, instantly I'd be like, I, I don't know if I'd be straight up panicking. I'd be like, okay, maybe he's outside. Side. Maybe you went to go get the trash or take out the trash. Maybe you went to go get the mail. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I don't know this kid. Okay. I don't know their household, how things roll. And I don't know how high functioning he is. But at the you see, I can see where he's coming from. But with an autistic child, with any child, really, you know what that child's behavior is, what they tend to do. Like if they tend to go, if they have been known to get up in the morning and try and do their own breakfast, Right? He is 15, so I can understand that. You'd say that, but if he's not known to go and take the rubbish out or go and get the posting, then you're not going to say that. And as I said, autistic children, they have a routine. They like to get up, have the breakfast, get washed, get dressed, go to school. That's their daily routine, Monday to Friday. And then they have another routine on the weekends, which can be very hard because they're so used to that Monday to Friday routine. It's very hard. And then all of a sudden on Monday, they're back to the Monday to Monday routine. It's very hard for them to sort of transition sometimes. So sometimes children who are autistic, when they go to school on a Monday, can have a bad day can have a bad day. I'm not saying do, they do. I'm saying they can have a bad day because they're not fully transitioned in their minds that they're now back at school. Right? And then come Friday, they're not going to school on a Saturday. And it's like, why aren't I going to school? So Saturday could be a pretty hard time for parents. So you have to try and keep them occupied as much as possible. It's not easy. You never know what you're going to get with a child who's autistic. You don't, apart from knowing the fact that he has, they have this routine in the morning and they have the same routine on the night time. They like that routine. My grandson comes to stay with me. I know the first thing he'll say to me in the morning, can I have a bath? Because he loves the bath. I go, yeah, okay. So while he's in the bath, he'll sit there and then I'll go, well, I'm going to get your breakfast on now. You're going to get out. So he'll, get, he'll say, get my breakfast first and then I'll get out. So I'll get his breakfast done for him. And I have to, I have to ask him because he has days where sometimes he'll, he'll just want a specific, like these waffles with chocolate in them. On them. Don't know if you can get them in the other side, but they are nice over there. And he likes them. Or sometimes he'll want a uh, scrambled egg. And sometimes he'll have the pizza from the Friday night. If we're talking about Saturday morning, he'll have a pizza, some of the pizza from Friday night. So I have to ask him, what do you want for your breakfast? And he'll tell me. So then I go and get his breakfast ready. When he's ready, he'll get out of the bath. And then I can guarantee you about one o'clock, one, two o'clock, can have a bath. He'll want to have a bath. Not because it's dirty. It's because that's how he finds himself to relax. It, it relaxes his body. So I find if something is getting too stressful for him, he likes to go for a bath. Like if he's getting bored or whatever, and he don't want to play with his toys and he don't want to do this, I say, I say to him, do you want to have a bath then? And he'll go and have a bath. And it calms him down. And then he comes out the bath and then he'll go in his bedroom, do whatever, or come in the living room, do whatever. Then I say, well, we're going to get your dinner on now. Oh, look, we'll have lunch, obviously. But then he'll go off and do what I want. Then on the night time, I say, 
Don't do anything like that. Can I have a bath first? I said, if you have a bath now, you can't. I'm not having one after dinner. You just have a quick face wipe down. Right? No, I'll have my bath now. So he likes a bath before his dinner. So then I cook his dinner, and then he gets out the bath. But he loves the water. It relaxes him. Same That's time, I would instantly be like, I'm not on it. Honestly, right off the bat, flipping the F out. I'm actually just going, okay, where, where is he? He's in the basement. Maybe he's playing his, you know, with his fidget spinner. All right, let's skip past this. The tongue. I've never, I've never known pain like this before. And walk me through the events that happen, you know, from Sunday leading yes. up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning. Shimon, girl, interviewer is finally getting warmed up. Yeah, let's let's because they they all do the like how how, how do you feel right now because of <laughs> what Sorry. happened here? Sorry, you, Sorry. You, Sorry. You, Sorry. What was the last thing you said to Sebastian before you disappeared? Are you okay? How are you feeling? <sighs> it's like, can we get to the stuff? You know what I mean? Let's get to the mean potatoes. Sunday, uh, we were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were out um, doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. And when we came home, uh, we had a pretty good evening together as well. Um, he was playing right up until bedtime and then some I let him stay up a little late um and when I told him to go to bed you know he's like I love you mom I love you puppies and uh he went to bed hmm. and um I went to bed around midnight everything seemed fine and uh when I went to wake him up for school Obviously, it wasn't fine. Something was wrong. Even his dad says in that interview, something must, it must have been in a position which he knew he had no control of, which he didn't like for him to leave that house in the middle of the night. He would not just leave. But something must have happened or there was some happened that he didn't feel comfortable with or something for him to leave so it wasn't all right there was something that child was not happy with that's when i i couldn't find him he wasn't in his room and he wasn't right now if i was that reporter i'd have gone so you say you went out you done your little errands and all this lot, and you went for something to eat. Was you with them then? To the, I always said to the stepfather, was you with them then? He would have then said, to him and said, no, I was, oh, yes, I was. You know what I mean? But he could tell, if he wasn't there and he was, he had left, he could go, no, I had to go to work or I had to go somewhere else. You know what I mean? But she doesn't. Come on, you're letting us down. In the house. I'm sorry, I gotta re rewind that one more time, uh, because I, I'm, 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 because you're talking about Sunday, yeah, the night before he went missing, right? The night before, or the day before he went missing, right? And she asks, "What did you do on the night before, or what did you do with him the day before, right?" And she says, yeah, we were just, you know, we were just running around. We were just running around. Well, specifically, tell us what you did. Yeah. What happened? So I'm rolling that back. I'm so sorry, guys. I know some of you guys are like, why do you have to rewind it all the time? Because there's key things. Exactly. Something could have happened Sunday afternoon, which he wasn't happy about. Not me. The need to find out what happened Sunday afternoon. Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, which he wasn't comfortable with. Something happened. 
That lad wasn't come because no way. Oh. If he left that house on his own, on his own accord, on his own two feet, right? As his father said, there must have been a situation where I can't exactly remember the word for word, but you'll hear it later on. Word for word, but he said something like, if there was something he wasn't happy with, or he he had no control of, and he want he needed to get out of it. Like most children, they have like here when my grandson's here, his bedroom or my bedroom. He'll go there if he wants somewhere to really calm down. So much going on, and it's too much for him. He'll go to the bedroom. Right? Um, which isn't very often. But he likes it in the bedroom anyway. He likes trash in my bedroom especially. But he'll go to the bedroom. Now, if something happened in that house where he couldn't get away from me, he couldn't get to his bedroom or he couldn't get to that room where all that space that he likes to go to, right? Then... Is going to the only option for me to do is to get out of that house. You know what I mean? To get out, to get away from whatever was upsetting him was to get out of the house because he couldn't get away from it in the house. He had to get out of the house, and that's the only way he could get he, he could calm it down in his head. Was to it's like people say, well, instead of hitting that person and. When they're winding you up, instead of hitting them, just walk away. And that's what uh, an autistic child will do. They can't get away from that situation. If there's a situation, they will walk away from it. Right? They go to their safe place or their corner, which they find safe. My other grandson, he likes to go and sit in his mum's room on the floor by, between the bed and the window sometimes, watching his tablet. Because he knows no one can see him there. So he feels like that's a safe place for him. His mum's room is safe. But no one can see him, so no one can keep interrupting him. If you get what I mean. So I'm like, that doesn't make sense. This is crucial stuff. I, I get it. Sometimes you forget things. Sometimes I forget what I did yesterday. I'm going to be real. OK, like verbatim, I'll be like, what did I do yet? Oh, I did that thing. Uh, you know what I mean? But you should already know this stuff by rote by now. Police have already asked you this. You've been interviewed by another uh, reporter, another news station. So you should know this stuff, right? How could she be sitting here saying, oh, yeah, we're just riding around. We're just riding around and getting it. What? What exactly did you do? Because maybe somebody there saw something. Or maybe somebody saw him and he became a target. Right? Specifics. Exactly. Perhaps when he's having a meal, something upset him there. You know what I mean? And he took it home with him and he just can't deal with it. Even going to his room or sitting there quietly, you can't deal with it because, you know what I mean? Well, I'm just rolling that back. We're going to hear that all over again. See, in, in, reporter, good job. Getting warmed up, finally getting into it. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, right? Not the... What What? What? what was the last crayon he... Pascal, she didn't follow up with the question. She said, oh, we did some running about it, and then we had some uh, dinner. She could have said, oh, was you was you all together then? Was you and you and yourself and was it you, yourself and Sebastian? And the father could have said, the stepfather could have said, no, I wasn't there. She didn't ask that follow-up question. Used. Like, we don't want that. We want this. I don't know I'm painting like this before. And walk me through the events that, that happen, you know, from Sunday leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning. Walk me through the events. 
Hold on. Sunday. She said, walk me through the events. Okay. If this was being, inter- if this was an interrogation, they would have been like, you didn't tell us anything. Walk us through the events. What yeah. did you do Sunday? Okay. What did you do with him? Dag nabbit. Okay. One more time. And that happened, stop. you know, from Sunday leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning. Mm-hmm. Sunday, uh, we were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were out. Out and about. Um, doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. What was the whole day? <laughs> Come on, man. We were riding around and getting it. Just do, just riding around and getting it. What? What is it? What were you running around and doing? She, she made the point as well that they had a good day. Right? Now, as I've said before, children who are with autism, they like routine. And they do, and the one problem my, my son has with his little boy and my daughter has with her little boy is the fact they don't like shopping. They don't. They don't like going from one shop to another, to another, to another. They don't like it. If I said to my grandson, right, we're going into town and we're going to do this, and then we're going to get you a toy, I oh, forget everything else. You said the one thing that is clicked on to, and that was the toy. And we have to, and you literally have a meltdown until we get to that store to buy him the toy. Or if I say we're going to go to this shop, this shop, and then we go and get something to eat, forget the shops, it's urged food. So now I just give him one instruction at a time. We're going to go to this shop, so then we go to that shop, and then we come out, right, let's just pop into this shop, we go into that shop. But I don't like shopping anyway. I really detest going to shops. I hate going into the city centre. <clears throat> right? I really do. When I go anywhere now, I, I know what I'm going for. I get it and I'm out. Right? So when I go into the city centre at Christmas time, I go in at Christmas time. And I thought, oh my God. Oh my God. And I went in and I had to get my son, my son-in-law and my daughter their presents. You know, I've done it in an hour. I was back on that uh, bus back home within an hour. And that was with getting something to eat as well. So within an hour, I've gone in, got three presents, which is pretty hard for two of them, right? Um, got three presents and got something to eat and got the bus home within an hour. I do not mess about. So when I'm with, uh, with my grandson, I'm the same. I go in one shop, I know what I'm getting, I go in, I get it, we're out. Because I know he don't like shops, I don't like shops. So that's what we do. Give us the specifics. This is ridiculous. I'm rolling that again, that's so bad. Happened, you know, from Sunday leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning. Specific events. What did you do? We were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were Where out, did you go? Um, doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. And when we came home, uh, we had a pretty good evening together as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he was playing right up until bedtime. And then some, I let him stay up a little late. Um, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I told him to go to bed. Mm-mm. You know, he's like, I love you mom i love you puppies Mm-mm. and uh he went to bed Mm-mm. and um i went to bed around midnight Mm-mm. everything seemed fine and uh when i went to wake him up for school he was gone I, I couldn't find him he wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house you know what I think everything was a lie until she said, but then I went into his room and he wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house. That's the only part I think she's telling the truth on. Everything else right there, I think it's a- Thank you. I agree with you, Pascal. And so do some others. 
We're not knocking the parents. We're not having a go at them. But the truth, they're not telling us the truth. They're not telling the police the truth. And believe me, the police would have been watching these interviews. And that's why they didn't do another interview after that first one. They did one on Lee Lloyd, another one with a, a TV uh, a news channel, and then this one. And this one, they're not showing their faces because they don't want people to analyse them. Right? They don't want people to well, she wasn't upsetting you. Oh, he was too calm. Well, I'm sorry, but she seems a lot calmer now than she did before. She seems a lot calmer now in this one. The bold face lie. So you go, she goes, give me the, the specific events. Give me specifically what you did. Did you go to Costco? Did you go to Six Flags? Did you go to his favorite video game store? Did he need to go? Did you need to go and get new some uh, underwear for him? So you went to TJ Maxx or Marshalls or whatever. Okay, you went to Kohl's. Did you go somewhere? Did you go get his favorite malt shake? What happened when you went in there? And if you did so, what was going on then? Was there anybody creepy around? Was anybody looking at, lurking in the corner? None of that. She did not act, get to ask any of that because she just said, oh, yeah, you know, we were just riding around. We were just doing things. And then we had dinner. <laughs> Congratulations, you ate food. <laughs> make that make sense, y'all. Like I said, Sorry, that's not good. Then the other sense. part that I think is absolute BS, I'm just going to say it. I don't care. I don't think this woman's telling the truth. (sighs) And I know there's going to be a corner of the world being like, how dare you say that, Pascal? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I will sit here and go, listen, guys, I was wrong. I am so sorry. That's what I say. I will tell what I feel. I go on my feelings and what I see and what I hear. And if I don't like something, I will say so. I don't care if I hurt people. If I am wrong, I'd be first to put my hands up, right? I'm the first one to say, I'm wrong. But if I'm telling the truth, and some, it's, say I've had discussions with my son, right? I don't even go there with him no more because we end up having a massive argument with everyone. And he'll say something, and I'll say, no, sweetheart, no, you know what I mean? That thing happened. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I saw it. And I know because, so I will, normally I will stand my ground and say no till I'm blue in the face. I'll do it with others. I just can't do it with my son because I don't like to upset him. Right? And I go, do you know what? Let's just drop this. Just drop it now. Right? I'm not admitting that I'm guilty. Because I'm not. I know the truth. I know what I said. But when I'm speaking to others, when anyone else says anything, I will stand my ground. I know I'm telling the truth and what I'm saying is the truth. Then I will say, I'll stand my ground till I'm blue in the face. If I'm wrong, then I'm the first one to step up and say, sorry, you know what? I was wrong. Like tonight, I've come on and MG come on and I said to her, MG, I've got to apologise. You was right. Sebastian's bio father, father, should say, not bio, I don't like that word. Sebastian's father is works for a police force, right? I read somewhere, he's young some other work. So I said, so this just shows you can't believe everything you read on the internet. Right? So, I put my hands up if I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong in this case, like Pascal, we will be the first one here saying, you know what? I didn't expect that. I really thought this. But I'm sorry I said this, and I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I even thought that. I'm sorry. I will publicly go live on here and say I am sorry. But until they prove me wrong, which I hope they do, 
I don't mind apologising. I hope they proved me wrong. I would stand by my my by my word, and I I believe something happened in that house. Something happened that day. All right, let's go on. Sorry, but at the same time, that's what my gut feeling told me. Yeah. My gut feeling tells me that she's not telling the truth at all in this situation. And no, I'm not an expert. My gut feeling is a bad full of BS. I'm not a behavioral expert, okay? Not somebody who can sit here and break down the vocal patterns of her voice and sit there and go, that was a lie. No, but something about it doesn't seem right. Oh, you know, we were riding around and getting it. And then we went to dinner. And then he went, he played some video games. And then I let him stay up a little, a little late because I usually do that. Then he went, good night. Love you guys. Love you puppies. And he went to bed. And then I woke up, went in his room, and he was gone. Everything was a lie until she said he wasn't home. He, when she said, as soon as I opened the door, he wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house because that's why. Because he really wasn't in the house anymore. Yeah. And I think everything, whatever happened, whatever bad thing that happened, happened Sunday. Yeah. During that Sunday. Yeah. Whatever what happened, happened Sunday. Or Saturday. Sunday was something else, though, too. They weren't sitting there eating dinner. They weren't out there riding around and getting, maybe they were riding around and getting stuff. Has any has the police got any proof of where they went to eat? Has that been like let's say they went to get some eat? So she's obviously had to tell the police where they went. So I'm sure the police will get checked up on that to see if that was wrong. And if they've got cameras in there, they'd look on their cameras to see them in there. You know what I mean? But they weren't running riding around and getting stuff with him. He was probably gone by then. Now, of course, the question still remains. Is it by their hand or is it by somebody else? That's something that still hasn't been answered. You also got to remember, they still had Saturday and Sunday. Shoot, even Friday. It's a whole weekend. Because the schools aren't going to start calling and going, hey, we, uh, he's been absent since Thursday. So if there was a crime that was committed, something unthinkable that happened to this young teen, it happened. We know that one photo that they took was took on us. I believe it was on the Saturday. The photo they used in the um, missing show alert photo was the one they took on Saturday. There was no photos took of him on the Sunday. And that's why the police were asking for video cameras and everything to go back to Sunday and check their cameras for because they wanted proof of life because they had no proof of life for the Sunday. Right? So something could have happened Saturday. Like I said, if they've got no proof that they where they went to eat is on camera or anything. They've got no proof of that. Did they pay by cash? Did they pay by their back, uh, Visa card? Because I pay things on my card now. I hate cash. I didn't get card come through the other day. And I went to, like, you have to put it in the machines just to register it first. So I did. Then I pulled it out. Then I put it back in because I needed cash. Only £30, but I needed some cash, which I hate having. And he kept saying, your card's not being recognised. I'm going to use a flipping Visa card. So it's recognised. Fourth time, I put my card in. It actually accepted it and let me get my money out. But otherwise, I'm always using my card. Always. Anyway, let's go. Friday with, between f Friday after school to s Monday morning. Some. Somewhere between that time, they had plenty of time to do whatever they needed to do. Clean up, move, move things around, and do whatever the hell they needed to do. And again, the question is, is it them? Is it one of them? 
or is this somebody else? It something could have happened after they went out Saturday because I'm sure that photo on the missing poster is from Saturday, right? So we got proof that he was alive on Saturday. If that's the case, but something could have happened Saturday later on in the afternoon or in the evening. Yes. But you got to remember, whatever they did, they cleaned up something. There's no scent of this kid. That's huge, guys. Yeah. That's why I'm like, did they go in and smell? Did it reek of bleach? Did they, did they, are they combing through that house right now? Where could they have taken this young man? Where? Is there a fresh mound? I don't think anything happened Saturday. I think it happened Sunday. Right? And I think when he left to go to wherever it was, Tennessee, or wherever he was going, right, he took him with him then, in the car. Don't forget, they get in the car from the drive, from the garage way. So they get in the car, they open the garage doors, get in the car, and drive out. So no one's going to see him in the car, not just lying on the back seat, or even in the boot. Now, there's plenty of places he could have, a body could have been jumped along that route. It's a three and a half hour drive. He wasn't due to start work till the following morning. So why did he leave? So uh, why did he leave the night before? On the dirt in the backyard. I'm, I'm being dead ass. I'm being dead ass. I'm sorry. I got to ask these questions. Somebody got to. Mm. Because this kid's not getting justice right now. It's been 14 freaking days. And if he's out here barefoot in the cold, you think he's going to survive? For 14 days like that? No. This is insane. So I think she's lying right there. Oh, I let him sleep. I I let him go and and, and sleep. Or I let him stay up a little bit later. She's adding all this extra stuff. Why is she adding all this extra stuff? Yeah, to me, that's a lot. To, you don't need to add. If you're telling the truth, you don't Something need to add Something happened on. Sunday. Something most definitely happened Sunday. Yeah. And whether it was the crime or them covering up the crime, that Sunday was not dedicated. Plus, if you're in the house, right, I walk around without my shoes on, right? And a lot of the people in USA, they take the shoes off when they first come in, right, and walk around barefoot, right? But it's not long before I get my slippers on, believe me, because my feet get cold. But I do take my shoes off. So if he left all his shoes in his bedroom or wherever they keep his shoes, if all his shoes are in place, means he left without his shoes. Which would mean no scent. Obviously no scent. Because you don't leave a scent, do you, when you're walking around outside? No. I've said he was carried out of that house. He was took out of that house by the car. And that's the only way. Or, if he did walk out of that house, he's walked out the front door to the curbside where there was a car waiting for him. But if that was the case... That car would have been picked up on that video camera which goes 24 hours a day on that first house on the corner and it hits the road. It comes down the drive up because the house is higher, higher up than the drive as it, it's angled to go down the drive. So it's going to hit a car coming up into the road and then literally minutes later leaving. It's going to catch a car there but there's nothing. So he didn't walk out of that house. Didn't walk to the curbside and get in a car. He was took out of that house in a car. And I'm sorry, something had to have happened Sunday. I wouldn't say Saturday because I've got proof of life from Saturday. But then again, something could have happened Saturday night. You know what I mean? Which gives them all days, all Saturday night and Sunday. To clean the house up and get rid of anything. But if they, if they really wanted to, if the police brought something up in, in that house, right, they've only got to get the looming alive. 
please just not hide gleaming out. Just think. Gleaming out will pick it up even me. I think so anyway. Believe it's the bleach, it'll pick it up. But you can't get it all up. There's little nooks and crannies blood gets into. All the little cracks in the flooring or whatever. I tell you now, they would find blood if they did it. So. To them running errands with good old, young, and innocent Sebastian Rogers. I said it. I said it, Dag Nabbit. Okay. All right, moving on. And that's when I panicked. And when you panicked, uh, what did you do? First thing I did was call my husband. And um, I said, he's not here. My husband said, what do you mean he's not here? I said, he's not in the house. And he said, you know, immediately just started, you know, did you check here? Did you check there? Did you look here? And uh, I ran through the house. And um, at that, that point, I was hysterical for lack of word and uh we called we, we three-way the um the police and um i'm within minutes they were here i couldn't tell you exactly how long i know it was fast um can i also point something out too i'm so sorry guys i know i keep cutting in and out of this but this stuff just gets me uh just burns my cookies y'all i'm gonna keep it a buck uh, especially when the, there's potential lying going on here. So remember, she wakes up. She goes into his bedroom. He gone. Sheer panic shoots through her entire body. First person she calls. The first person she calls. His stepdad. Now here, let me, let me, the reason why I say that and the reason why I think this is a big deal is because she doesn't say anything about searching. She doesn't say anything about going running around and trying to find him. She doesn't even say, oh, I called some of his friends. I'm sure, I'm sure Sebastian had some friends that he was in contact with at least. She didn't, she didn't call neighbors. She didn't go to the next neighbor. She didn't make phone calls to any other person around that may, he may have gone to their house, possibly. You see what I mean? Like, with Madeline Soto's case, right, even theirs was messed up, but they they did say some things that make sense, right? As far as Jenna going and running off and, and going to places that she thought her daughter would be at, which we already know was a lie, but still, that's what I would do if I was a, 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 a the parent. I'd be calling the friends. I'd be calling. I would be calling. Uh, shoot, I, I'd even try the school too, just to see if he wanted to go to school early what that day for some weird reason. I don't know. I'd be doing everything I can. The but Pasco, he didn't have no friends, so he didn't have to phone friends. So he had no. He had. I believe they said he had two friends at school. Right? Two friends at school. And like I said, children with autism, like, it affects each child differently. So where one can be a bit boisterous and loud, like Ellis is, you could get people, ones which are very quiet and timid, a bit like my other grandson. Right? So... It's hard, it's hard for them to make friends. So when they do, their friends circle is very small. My grandson's got, I believe it, there's two friends he plays with. Right? But he's quite a big lad. And he goes and plays with the, in wing. He doesn't have his break time with his class. He has it earlier. Right? He has it with another group, another class. Because they've got uh, activities he can do which he loves to do. Right? And it keeps him karma. So then when they come in from their break, Alice just does 
What was it? I said he does. I can't remember. But then his friends, his classmates, or whatever, go out for their break, for their 15 minute break, or whatever. And he's happy like that. He's still getting a break, but it's not at the same time. It's not with his other four or five lads in his class. It's with another class, with another same class. So, but if he's happy, it keeps him calm. And then he comes out of school and he wants to go and climb up on these hills out there. No. But he does it with his friend then from class. But it's very hard for them to make friends. Very hard. But the first person I call would not be hubby, you know, stepdad who is in Memphis. First person I'm calling are uh, close friends, best friends, people that he he frequents frequently hangs out with, the places that he likes to go and, and hang out at as well. Well, I'd be pulling off those. You see what I'm saying? I'd be going to all those places too. And and then while I'm on route doing all those things, then I'd be calling stepdad. You see what I'm saying? It's weird how quickly they called nine one one. That's what I feel. That's in my bones feels weird. Instantly call nine one one. What? You hadn't even left the house yet. You haven't even looked through the whole house yet, and you're already calling him, calling stepdad, and be like, "He gone. <laughs> he could be in the. He could be outside taking out the truck." You see what I'm saying? It's just so bloody fast. It's such, and I get it that he is really missing, okay? Let's keep it a buck. He is really missing, but I feel like there would be a procedure that you would do first before you start calling up 5-0 just to make sure, even if it is just 15 minutes of search, right? Just to make sure. Then you're calling 911. I know it's one of the first things do clearly but it seems so fast that they called 911 that's all i'm saying okay it's just weird and, and then carol you know what you ain't wrong with that too man calling three way he had to be on the phone while she was calling 911 well me i have to disagree with you there pascal as a mother and a grandparent if my son and my daughter wasn't in their beds in the morning and my doors were locked, right, and all this, and I wasn't downstairs, I'd look in the room, if they weren't there, I'd go downstairs, if they wasn't in the living room, or the kitchen, or the bathroom, wherever, if it wasn't in them three or four rooms, then I'd be on the phone. Now that would take me a matter of what five minutes to do that. So within five minutes, I'd be on the phone, and while I'm on the phone, <coughs> they would see me going through my cupboards, going under down the side of the beds and in the wardrobes and all that. Like they would see me on the phone while I'm calling them, but they had the three-way con control. And call three ways to control the narrative, yes. On one to report him missing? Why? It's a plain and simple freaking phone call. My son is missing. He looks like this. He's 15 years old. He has autism. We love him and we don't know where he is. He, last time we saw him was last night. We don't know where he is. Why does, why does he need to be on three-way? Exactly. All right. Control issues. And we haven't found him. When I got the phone call that he was missing, mm. um, like she said, we asked questions of where's he at, check this, check that, and then we called the sheriff's department. I called the sheriff's department. I stayed on the phone. Uh, so it took from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock to check everywhere in the house before you phoned the police. Is that right? The sheriff's. So it took you two hours to search for him before you found the place. Okay, good one. What are you, tortoises? They're the slowest animal I know. I don't know if there's any other things slower. Right? 
my be snail. Come on, it didn't take you two hours to look around your house to find him before I'm to find the phone the police or the sheriff's office. Pretty much most of the time. Um and then I while I was at work I asked for a relief. Got a relief, got in my truck from Memphis and made my way to Nashville. Called ass. And that was I guess Monday? The morning that he was missing, yes. And um, hmm. so what was your reaction when you got that call from your wife that Sebastian was missing? Initially, I was like, oh, he's he's goofing around again. Here we go. He's like hiding. And then when we talked about the places to check and he's not there, I was like, okay, stop. Instantly. Call the police. Instantly. Hold on. I'm rolling that one more time. So what do you take you two hours then to find the place? If you're so instantly knew that he... Something was wrong, and you said phone the police. Why didn't you phone them then? That would have been what half six, quarter seven, the latest. No, they didn't get the phone call till eight o'clock. I'm rolling that back one more time. I just want to hear what he said about he goofing off and all that one more time. So sorry, guys. What was your reaction when you got that call from your wife that Sebastian was missing? Initially, I was like, "Oh, he's he's goofing around again. Here we go. He's like hiding." And then when we talked about the places to check and he's not there, I was like, okay, stop. Instantly. Call the police. Okay. Instantly. Mm. I'm a black and white kind of guy. I, so. Apparently he's a black and blue, blue kind of guy too. Oh, I'll keep, in, keep moving on. And you did you know like he, he didn't take shoes with him, right? He locked the door on his way out, or I guess... What are some of the things that you think he did as he left? We checked for all of his shoes and none of them are missing. Um, the door was locked. And what was, was there some discrepancy as to what he was? Okay. The door was locked. Let me remind you again. The door was locked. So he disappeared. He vanished. He left the house, allegedly. But the door was locked. So what are they trying to say? I also heard someone asked about the back door. And someone said, Doug, apparently they've got a, a piece of furniture or something blocking the back door. So they must use the entrance to the garage right to go in and out. Right? But the dogs lost the scent when they come out the garage. So we've not been outside in that garage area. If you look at that house, they've got a, quite a wide area at the back where the garages are. It's not been out there because the dog, dogs went into the garage area and as soon as they got to the entrance of the gar garage area and outside, they lost the scent. Are they trying to say that he had the key so he let himself out and locked the door behind him? Or are they saying that aliens hovered above the house and with some weird tractor beam, laser beam thing were able to materialize a beam through the roof of the house into the bed of Sebastian Rogers and suck him straight through the roof. Yep. You've got it, Pascal. You've got it. Into the spaceship and they went off into galaxies far, far away. Because I'm going to tell you, the way that they're making it sound like, they're trying to make it sound like this kid pulled a David Blaine, that this kid is mother-loving Houdini. Yeah. He David Copperfield out here in this biz naive. He just went bippity boppity boo and he disappeared. <laughs> Sh without shoes. And the door to the house, this front door of the house is still locked. So you're telling me he never went out the front door. So then where did he go? 
And wherever he went, it must be a very cushy place because he doesn't have shoes. You see what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense, guys. And the fact that they keep adding that, he doesn't have his shoes. All of his shoes are here. I know that they have to say that because if they're trying to cover their own ass, they have to add, add that piece. But really, do they have to add that piece? Because it makes things very odd and weird. And it makes me and a lot of y'all scratch our heads going, well, then, then what did you do to him, man? Okay. The hell did you do to, to, this, to this young man, baby? What did you do? Because this is not making any earthly sense. Not what, that, somebody not... crawl through the window in the middle of the night and just take this kid, just napped him in the middle of the night like this, carried him out the window? Like I said, please make this make sense. It doesn't make sense. Cases, the benefit of the... strange moments and these interviews are not very helpful and whenever they answer a question they're not giving us straight answers at all it's very vague it's very odd uh it like i said they it's like they he just david david copperfield he just vanished in out of in thin air that's the craziest thing i've ever heard wearing when he went to bed or what was he last seen wearing what what was he wearing to bed break that like, down when he went to bed, uh, he was wearing black um, sweatpants with white stripes down the side. Uh -huh. And he had on a black, long sleeve black shirt with a print on the front. I'm pretty sure it was one of his. Um, uh, like Star like, Wars or Halloween or. Uh, um, or even Minecraft. Yeah. Those yeah, are the three main it, things. The three things that he's. Majority is on his clothes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has his flavors. <laughs> black and on black on black. Obviously, you guys are going through the unimaginable and then, you know, getting a lot of like the kickback that you've seen on social media. I mean, how much worse has that made it for you two to go through something like this? Hmm. Honestly, um, we stopped looking at it. There's a lot of terrible people in this world and I don't want to waste energy on any of that I want the focus on finding our son I'm rolling that one I'm rolling that back one more time okay and yeah th that doesn't sound like PJ's Brenda uh Brenda I agree the the what they described does not sound like PJ's to me it sounds like he was wearing like Adidas pants and like uh you know a black t-shirt you know, kind of thing. So, like I said, he was like, it's like he was wearing black on black on black, but how convenient that he'd be wearing the darkest colors under the sun in the middle of the night when he disappeared. How can he is a picture I've got of him, right? Um, hold on, no, I'm not. it doesn't show him in the full t shirt, but there's wrong in the top, right? Now, if that's one of the tops that I'm trying to describe, then that isn't a BJ top. The, the tops they've described are not pajama tops. The bottoms I've described are not pajama bottoms. You know what I mean? So you're telling me this lad he didn't have his bath or shower on the Sunday night? Uh, I know some children are very funny with baths and some are very funny with showers. Some don't like having their hair washed. It can be like, where is my, with my one grandson, he loves his bath. And my other grandson, he loves his bath. Not as bad as Ellis, but he'll have his bath. You know what I mean? And then they get into the PJs. This and the other tops I mentioned are not pyjama tops. Right? Anyway, let's get back to this. It's going to be a long night if it was. Convenient, right? Hamburger. 
Uh, hold on real quick, guys. What I want, all I ask of anyone is if they're able and willing is to help find him, help spread his flyer, help look for him, call in if you know anything or see anything. But we just ask that people focus on finding Sebastian. And he's never done anything like that before, right? Just kind of walked out of the house. He's not a runner. Um, this is this is not normal for him to run away. Um, if I mean, I just he's no, he's not a runner. And any places, I guess I know you you guys have been told to stay in the house, right? Just in case he comes home. We we are doing what we've been asked to do by the law enforcement agencies and everybody involved. I don't care what the law enforcement agency says. There's no way if my child is out there barefoot in a thin top, really, and some joggers or whatever, I just have trousers, whatever, would I be sitting in my house? I'm sorry. I'm taking them, you stay here, but I'm going, I'm looking. You know what I mean? And I would be out there from new, from dusk, from well, sunrise to dusk and longer. I'd have my flashlight with me. Here we go. <laughs> I am not going to divulge anything more than that. Yeah. But if you, what I'm trying to ask, I guess, next is if you were to go out and search right now, if people want to help search, what types of places would you guys look? Uh, that he can maybe be at. Why doesn't he want to divulge into it? It's just said it's going by what they're doing, what the police have told asked them to do. So you've already told us that. So what else don't you want to divulge? Anywhere and everywhere. At this point, there's. <laughs> it's been eleven days. He could be anywhere. Yeah, they've searched the woods. They've searched parks. They've searched creeks. They've searched. At this point, it it. Anything and everything. Anywhere that he could be. Mm. Staying out of the weather. Get search parties on that route to where he was working. Get search parties going along that route. That's what I would be doing now. Or or, or mm -hmm. getting food or, I mean, honestly, at this point, he could genuinely be anywhere. Okay. I... I, I... And uh, just say it, Pascal. Say it. Can I? I? I'm so sorry, guys. I love you guys. I really do appreciate y'all. I just I need to I need to roll this back just a tiny bit because I need to I need to reanalyze something here. Can you just roll with me for a second? Because uh, it's especially when Papa talking, when stepdaddy, sorry, yeah. stepdaddy talking, because I know that Papa is out there in the streets trying to find. I know what he's going to say. Trying to find him. And I'm wondering as well if stepdaddy is out here in these streets trying to find him as well, or if he's just staying his interesting ass home, uh, his questionable ass home. Okay, uh, but there is something here that I, I don't know. It's just popping up to me. And I and again, this is me. I could be wrong. This is the reason why I want to play it again so I can hear it. Let's take a listen to it one more time. This piece here. Uh, do me a favor, guys. Okay, I see a bunch of y'all here. I really do appreciate all y'all for being here. I really appreciate the love. Thank you so, so very much. If you're watching on X, okay, shout out to the X fam. Please be sure to follow me on X, okay? Go over there, hit that follow Put in the comments so we can hear from you, you guys that are watching on X, okay? Um, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, all right, please be sure to hit that like button down below. Please hit that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook. Don't forget to hit the follow button on my Facebook page. Hit that subscribe button, subscribe. We're, we're helping with law enforcement. And, uh, you know, I'm not, div 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 you know, I'm not going to jump in and I'm not going to give you any more information than that. We're, we're helping with, with law enforcement. That's it. It, it just seems weird. It's like, it's, 
it, it's 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 giving me different vibes, guys. It's giving me that vibe of like we're on a sign path, Pascal. We're on a sign path. I don't know. It's it's like we were on a break. You know what I mean? It's it's just it. I don't know. It just I'm I'm talking to police. I'm co- cooperating with police. They're I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm helping. But you're not answering any of the questions that are being asked. It's odd. It's very odd. And I will also say this: if you can't answer simple questions like this, how are you able to operate a crane? How are you mm-hmm. able to drive from other parts mm-hmm. of the state and operate a crane if you can't answer simple questions? Think about that for a second. Mm-hmm. You're operating heavy machinery. It's very important that you are solid with your communication, right? Like, don't put it there or I'm moving the crane over there. You're not sitting here going, yeah, you know, I operate that thing every day. I put gas in it. I put gas in it. I put gas in it. Like, see what I'm saying? Somebody's asking you a straight up question and that's how you're answering. Make it make sense. He's not answering any of these doggone questions. This is so freaking frustrating. Watch him as he continues to to be evasive. But if you, what I'm trying to ask, I guess next is if you were to go out and search right now, if people want to help search, what types of places would you guys look at that he can maybe be at? It's a good question. Anywhere and everywhere. That there's everywhere and anywhere. Yeah, you were looking every. Come on. He doesn't have a favorite spot he likes to go to. He doesn't have a place where he goes and he, you know, uh, you know, hangs out and reads comic books and plays video games somewhere that's that's not at home. You know what I mean? Does he not have a favorite playground that he used to go to when he was a kid or anything of that sort? Come on, man. Stop being so damn evasive. Everywhere and anywhere. So you're telling me he could be in Mars. He could be down the street. He could be up my nose right now. He could be anywhere, everywhere, all at the same time. He's trying to make it sound like this guy's omnipresent. Come on, guys. This is so stupid. Point. There's. It's been eleven days. He could be anywhere. Yeah, they've searched the woods. They've searched parks. They've searched creeks. They've searched. At this point, it it anything and everything. Anywhere that he could be. Staying out of the weather, or or getting food, or, I mean, honestly, at this point, he could genuinely be anywhere. How hopeful Mm. are you, too, that he will come home? I will never give up hope on finding my child. Stop. Optimism is at its highest, regardless. Our son is out there. We're going to find him. That's the only part that she said that is true. He's out there. But does she know where he is? I think the daddy, the stepdaddy knows. I really do. And now just... I mean, publicly, like, obviously, police are now investigating a landfill. People are speaking out about that. What are your thoughts about that? Everybody has an opinion and their (laughs) assumptions, and they are entitled to those. But as I've stated before, all we've asked people to do is to look at the facts. And we have looked at the facts. Facts. Your son went missing on the 26th or 25th. Of February, and he just, hmm, as Pascal said, just, he was keep it as he went. Right? The facts are, he went out the house, even though the door was locked. That's a fact. Fact two, the dogs lost all, any scent of that child once they come off the property. Right? So did he get into a car and get to the back? Did he run to meet with someone? And that's what he's done. But like I said, the camera on that corner house, which I pointed out the other day, would have caught that car coming in because it's a dead end. Would have caught him coming in and caught him going out. Right? Um, 
fact. So that fact two, the saint. There was no saint. Another fact. No video camera. No doorbell ring. Doorbell. Nothing. Plus the fact that the door was locked in the first place. How the hell did he get out of that house? If the door was locked. And if I'm writing what I've heard, don't quote me on this, but I heard that apparently they have like, some furniture or kitchen or furniture by that door, back door, because they don't use the back door. They use the entrance to the garage to go in and out. That child didn't play outside. He had no one to play with. He didn't socialise. You kept it off the internet. So we had no uh, socialisation with anyone on, online. They could have put perimeters on his laptop, on his uh, laptop, on his iPad, on his whatever. Even on his phone, he's only got contact and a calculator, I believe. Well, that them are the facts and that's what we're going on and they all, in what you're telling us is not aligning up with the facts. Not what everybody's putting out there. What if is... they have questions, call the law enforcement agencies mm. and they'll give you whatever they can give you. But the assumptions are just that. They are an assumption, your opinions. We pray for everybody. For hopefully this never happens to you. And if it ever does, then you'll understand. But I pray it doesn't. And they're doing their job. They're looking everywhere they can for my, for I mean. Do you think the mother's on some sort of medication? Because it's just come to me that because she seems a lot calmer today. Than what she did before. <laughs> I know that feeling, MG. That was me earlier. Right? But she seems a lot calmer. You know what I mean? Is she getting over the. I don't know. Is she on some sort of medication to keep her calm? Just saying. I'm rolling that back. What, 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 what? But I pray it doesn't. And they're doing their job. They're looking everywhere they can for my, for, I mean. Are you forgetting his name now? Their goal is the same. Uh -huh. We just want to find him. If you could. Okay. Something I wanted to point out, um, and maybe it's something that you guys can see, and uh, there's a little bit left here. I'm going to play the, the rest here in a second. Hands talking. A new show on NPR. Hands talking. Um, every single time that she says he's he could be anywhere, like he's like she says, oh I don't know, like he could be he could be anywhere. He's anywhere. He could be anywhere. You want to know what it is? That's my theory. I think he disposed of him, or he, he did something. I think stepdad did something. I really do think that. Okay. And if that's the hill, I'm going to die on Dagnabbit. I'm going to die on it. But I think stepdad knew something. Or Pascal, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell for thinking what I'm thinking. And not only that, can anyone tell me, has she even said his name in this interview? Has she said Sebastian likes this or Sebastian would like it? Had private places to go to. I she even said his name. I'm going to have to listen to that interview offline when I'm not online. I'm going to listen to it again. Did something. Either he made him let him go, like got rid of him alive on the side of the road somewhere, or he discarded his remains somewhere. I don't think I don't think mommy knows at all. I don't think mama knows at all. She knows what happened. But I think she doesn't know where he is. So, of course, she's saying he could be anywhere. That's mm -hmm. the only truth she said in this entire interview, in my personal opinion. 
Notice that whenever she says that, he could be anywhere. He's not saying anything. He doesn't say that. She says he could be anywhere. He does not. Only when they're saying, oh, when we're looking for trying to find him, is are there any places, that, any place that he likes to go to? And he's like, everywhere and anywhere. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it's kind of ridiculous and doesn't help at all. But clearly, he did something. That's what it feels like. Body was moved by him. Mama doesn't know. So every time she's like, I woke up one day and he was not in the house anymore. And he was not in in the house or in the bedroom. He was nowhere in the house or anywhere in the vicinity of the house. That's the only truth she's been saying this entire time. Hubby has, stepdad has not been speaking much or saying much at all. He hasn't. Can I just say a big hello to all those on Twitter? Please, if you want to join in with the conversation, join me on YouTube. You can, have, you can let us know what your opinions are. Or you can even leave me a message on Twitter. I do check my messages on Twitter. Okay? Or you can message me on my Facebook account, which is on my Twitter account. So please, let us know what you're all thinking. But thank you for being here. And if we've got, and those on YouTube who are lurking, please come and say hello. Come and say hi. And well, I'm going to carry on because we've got to get through this interview. Really? Throughout most of this interview, it's her. And the entire time, it's, you know, we, did, we just love him so much and we've just been looking for him. And it's just everything so calm and easy and just fine. And, you know, when he shows up, we're going to give him such a big hug. Just tell him how much we love him. But we miss him. But we're just going to work so hard. I'm sorry, but if if this lad is alive and he does turn up, right? From what I heard the other day, right? From what I heard, I'm go I'm going to double check. It. She will lose him anyway, because from what I heard, the father was going for full custody of Sebastian. And I believe they're supposed to go to a court hearing or something on that Monday. Or the Monday after, something like that. It's a bit coincidental, isn't it? He goes missing. As they're supposed to go to a court hearing. If that is true. To be better. Oh, and by the way, I believe my source. I believe my source. Better parents with him. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe this at all. Lo siento. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But my gut is telling me something. And the fact that she is so calm. Everything's fine. She's on medication, Pascal. She's a lot calmer in this interview. In the voice, everything. And that she was in the first interview. Even well, the first interview was on the live. The second interview was with a news station thing. And she, the first interview, she was a total wreck. You could hear her in the background. The second interview, she was literally a wreck as well. And now this time, she's calmer. So calm. So, so calm. Like what I say, you see, I'm I, have they given him a medication? We're just trying to find. And they hadn't even said his name. Have you noticed that? They didn't even say his name. See, I was right. I was right. They haven't said his name. They haven't said his name. That means to me, by not saying his name, by calling it say, oh, he did this, he did that. They are distancing themselves from him. By not calling him by Sebastian, like in that first interview they did with the news station, she said, if you call him by his name, he'll answer you. Right? They are, and in this one, they've not even mentioned his name. They are distancing themselves from him.
They don't even say his name, Sebastian. They don't even say his name. No, and this is not Biden saying Lincoln instead of Lakin, okay? This is their own child, and they are not even saying his name, at least not yet. Oh, he, he has his flavors. Yeah. What? The f? Yeah. Carol? Yeah. Whoops, wrong one. I agree. I think yeah. they're toast. I think they're going to be in some wow. serious trouble. I've got to get myself a signboard. I've got to get myself a signboard because I got things like that on it and it how no on it. I love that how no. I said it. I think they're gonna be in some serious trouble very, very soon. He I my theory, he got rid of the body, which is hurts to even say. She doesn't know. Maybe that was the plan for her not to know. Yeah. But maybe she stayed behind to clean up. That's just my theory. Let's hear the last 30 seconds of this mug. Say something to Sebastian if he's listening. Hold on. Their goal is the same. We just want to find him. If you could say something to Sebastian if he's listening right now, what would you say mm. to him? I would say that we love you and we miss you and we want you to come home and just know that that we all care about you so much. You're not in trouble. That there, I was waiting for that word to come out. You're not in trouble. But they still haven't said when she said, what would you say to him? I would just say, say it's my, my son. I, I'd go, Simon, please just come home. We love you. We want you home. Simon, it's not the same without you here, Simon. You know what I mean? His name would constantly be coming off my tongue to the point where the glues can't tell many times, times I said his name. And then he chimes in with, you're not in trouble. What's he in trouble for anyway? Is that why he something happened to him did because he did something? And then something got out of hand. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. The door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home. Your puppies miss you. Your family misses you. I miss you. Just come home. <sighs> Anything else that you two want to add or clear up or anything like that? Just, just no emotions. Yeah. Okay. Just help us find our son. Right. There's just no emotion. I feel like the first one we saw was better. I that. Right. See, there's no emotion at all. It's right. There is no emotion. My son's name will be literally dripping off my tongue. His father says it. He calls him by his name. He said, Sebastian, if you can hear this, and you have been held, run. Just run. Sebastian, I need, I want to hear your voice again. Sebastian, I need to see you again. He says his name, but these two, they don't say feck all when it comes to Sebastian's name because they are distancing themselves again. I, and they're probably watching all these videos again. So if they did another video, I could guarantee you, if they did another video, another interview, that name would be mentioned. You watch. They do any other interview. His name will be mentioned. Now, I said, did anyone pick up on what I changed? What they said? 
compared to what they said in the first and second interview. I'll wait. Right? When it comes to his clothing, what he was wearing, they told, said in the first interview, he was wearing black trousers, a black hoodie, no shoes, right? It's natural he, wear, he, he was wearing his glasses because that's an automatic thing. He, so he's not mentioning he's wearing his glasses because he would be wearing, he wears them every day all day long, right? So that's why, oh God, what am I saying? I, I'm going to howl. I'm going to howl because my mind is dragging me into areas I don't want to even think about. We are out here putting a word out about their son, Sebastian. Right? We, I can't go and look for him. I wish I could because if I was in the U, if I was over there, I would book a motel somewhere and I'd be looking. I'd be calling his name out. Right? Now, I was watching the prayer vigil and the guy who's organised it, he said, from what he's been told by the police, if all the search is going on, all right, listen to this, all the search is going on and all the people that have been walking around the searches, not the group, not the everyday, not the normal family searching, the organised searches. Their saint would have now ruined it for any dog, any saint dog to go through. And I thought, no, because saint dogs are made to pick up on a certain saint. You give them that saint, that's the saint they go for. So to me, that didn't make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense. Right, so they pick up on that one scent, they get it, that's the scent they are smelling. So get all the other scents around them, that's the one they want. So if they're trying to say, oh, well, because that's why the dogs didn't pick up on the scent, because there's other searches going on and all this lot. No, that's true. BS. Stop trying to cover up for the parents. Right? Dogs can lose a scent because of every smell and like that. Because sometimes they get, mm, I like that smell better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they can lose a scent. But normally, 99% of the time, that dog gets the smell of the scent. And that scent, that is what they follow. Nothing else. And if they lose that scent, it's not because other people have walked there. It's because the child or that person had not been there. Right? Now, she seems calmer. Anyway, going back to his clothing. So now... They said he left in a pair of black trousers, a black hoodie, no shoes, and a flashlight. Notice all dark clothing. And when you see him in his pictures, he's got beige hoodies, he's got everything quite light, apart from some of his t-shirts you've seen him. Now, all of a sudden, he's got joggers on, which have a have a striped down. And a long sleeve black top with a logo on the front, be it Minecraft or whatever. Right? Would you not have thought that is what the police needed to know at the beginning? Instead, they was given, oh no, I'll pull it up. Those given this description then I can pull it up. Where is it? Oh, I'll find it. Got so many flipping folders. Right. 
That was given this description of the other school, right? This. All right, let's see if I can get in. Oh, God. Just take it off. Right. Why is this? Oh, because I can read it soon. Why isn't that shown? Oh mm. no. Mm. Present. No, it should be shown. Right? That is what he was given. This. I can't get to zoom in anymore. But it says Get close to my sack because I can't even read it. Right. Well, it said he was wearing a black hoodie, black trousers, no shoes, and just. But now they take to black trousers with a stripe down and a black long sleeve shirt. Now that was what they should have been telling them in the first place, not the black trousers, black hoodie. Because people could be going about and they're looking for children who look familiar in the face to him with the glasses and the hair, who have a black hoodie on and black trousers, and it's not him. Perhaps if they were told he had black trousers which had a stripe down and a black long sleeve t shirt sort of top with a logo on the front, people would have thought. Oh, that's him. And look at that one he's wearing. Why can you worn that top? Why black? And what he was wearing, I agree with Pascal, it was not pyjamas. He was not in his pyjamas. They are his clothing that he was wearing that day. I wish we had photo evidence of him on that Sunday. I really do. This one, I believe, here, was taken on the Saturday. And, I don't know. I know, MG, I'm the same. Every day I get up and I sit here and I used to get up, log into my laptop, right? I'm going to check my e messages and my emails and all that lot. I have to be careful when I say messages because up here in Scotland, <laughs> when people say, oh, I've I have to do my messages, up here it means they go with shopping. Right? So when I'm around people in, in Scotland, up here, I can't say, oh, I, I did my messages this morning because it means shopping. So I have to say, I checked my emails and I've checked all my messages on my messenger. I have to go into full detail about where I've looked and found them. Anyway, so that has changed. Now that is weird to me. Why all of a sudden have they changed what he's wearing? You know what I mean? And the fact they never said his name once during that interview. I thought I was right. Pascal, thank you. I thought I was right. Not once did they mention his name. Now that is sad. So sad. Right? Now, I don't know if the... Right, we've got this one here. I'll show you the quick clip of this one. Right. Uh, oh. Oh, get up. Hold on. God, you know. Take that off. Flipping it. 
Ang ngiti nga lalak, eh, lalak, ayun nga, kasi na ang. Oh. Right, this is the interview, the one I saw this morning. And now we'll just wait for the six o'clock one. So, I don't know what time, what time would that make it over here in the UK? How many hours ahead of you are we? Five or six hours. So if it's six o'clock, then it's going to be 12 o'clock before I get to see. Still, no signs of the Hendersonville team. So last night, the community came together for a prayer vigil. Dozens of people showed up wearing green, Sebastian's favorite color. Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers, att attended that candlelight vigil and for the first time spoke at length about his son's disappearance. Nick is live from our Five Alert Center this morning. And Nick, this is his first mm -hmm. television interview, and it's with you. That's right. You know, he's issued a few brief statements by phone, but... Uh... The rest of the time, he says he's been spent focusing on the search for his son, but now finally speaking out publicly on TV. Two weeks after the teen disappeared, the father says he's not giving up hope. I'm hoping he's still alive. Yeah. That's my main hope right now. This is his focus. Seth Rogers wants to believe his son is still alive somewhere. He says he is in contact with law enforcement every single day. And like them, he says he is completely at a loss to explain exactly what happened to his son. It's a mystery. The working story, of course, is that Sebastian, who has autism, walked away from his Hendersonville home in the middle of the night, barefoot and alone. But Rogers says no. He says it makes absolutely no sense that search crews and bloodhounds have found no trace of the boy and he says Sebastian was not the type of child who would just wander away like this on his own. In order for him to actually do something that's out, out of the norm, something would have had to happen that he just felt that he couldn't deal with anymore. What that is and how, no one really knows, and Seth Rogers can't explain that. But I can tell you, he doesn't want it like to think that this is a possibility, but he does not rule out uh, the chance that there is foul play involved in what happened to his son. He knows that if his son could, he would, and is very able, he knows how to work a phone and communicate, he would reach out to the father for help. I can tell you, Seth went on to uh, share a number of other new details, so not only about the investigation, but personal details about his son, which may help in finding him. I'll have much more on this later this morning and tonight on News Channel 5 at 5 and 6. Uh, right now, the family of a man who police say was killed by his girlfriend uh, and her father is making funeral arrangements. Right. So that was the father talking. Again, I, my heart is going out to that guy. That's his only child. His only child. And I just hope and pray he's alive. I hope and pray. Perhaps he did just wander off. And perhaps the dogs aren't as good as they say they are. You know what I mean? But I'm sure he would have found his dad by now. Someone would have found him. If he just wandered off, they would have found him by now. I'm sure of it. That's why I say check the route the stepfather took to Tennessee or wherever it was. Check that route. It's a three and a half hour route. Why did he go to work the night before? If I'm on the understanding that he didn't start work until the morning. Right? Don't know what time he started work. Because his wife was burning him at what, quarter past six? Five, five, to, five past to quarter past six. So what time did he start work in the morning? And why leave the night before to go three and a half hours drive away? To have to book into a, a motel somewhere or whatever. You wouldn't do that. 
unless you lived away from home, unless you stayed in the motel during the week, you know what I mean? And just come home on the Friday, have this weekend there, and fair enough, that makes sense to do that. But, you know, I'd say check that route he took. Check cameras to see where his car went. I'm sure if he's on a, a main road or one of your highways, there'd be cameras. Has anyone thought of check? Has the police even thought of checking the cameras for his car? And where we come off at and whatever. So it just doesn't make sense to me now. And I feel sorry for the father. I really do. And like I said, if he is alive, that mother is going to lose him. She's going to lose him anyway. Because the father is from my source. Said he is going for full custody. And I'm sure I heard they had a court date on the Monday. It's a bit funny, he goes missing on that day, isn't he? And like the father said, something must have been, something happened in that home for him to walk out of it. Because he wouldn't just walk away from it. They have a safe place, and that safe place they find is normally in their home. Not out in the woods somewhere, or in an arcade somewhere, or play area. Yes, they do like to go to play areas. My, my grandsons love it. I live right next to two of them, two play areas. One right outside where I live and one a 10 minute walk away and it's all uphill which is tiring so we tend to go to the one just outside my where i live but he loves to play areas he loves being outside he loves going finding sticks and all this stuff and his imagination is wild Wild, but he's got a habit as well of he just goes up to random people and starts talking to them and I have to stop him you know what I mean I have to say you can't keep doing that so you can't take your eyes off him because you can have your eyes on him take your eyes off him for two minutes and you'll be talking to some random person so I should ima could imagine Sebastian being, they haven't said whether he's like that or not. They haven't said whether he's a quiet lad or if he's a bit like how he likes. Like, if someone asks me about Ellis, I say he's very ambitious. He's full of energy. I feel like taking out the batteries just to get some peace, just have a five minute break some day right and um he loves play areas he loves talking to random people he loves doing all these sort of things telling them what he's doing and where he's going or where he's being and what is what he's going to do in the back meteors coming from outer space and hitting my house that's how wild his imagination is Right, but you don't hear nothing about that about Sebastian. So we don't know if he's the sort of lad that would just go off and talk to random people, or if he's the sort of person who, who, who with autism who doesn't. You know what I mean? I've got two grandsons. One who's on the spectrum, and one is being check uh, going through the process now. Right, and. Um, the one who's on the spectrum is very quiet and very, very timid. He will not go to strangers. He will not. He's very much a mommy's boy. Very much a mommy's boy. Oh, and when his mommy's not there, then he's a daddy's boy. You know what I mean? But he won't go up to 
complete strangers as you walk along the street and start a conversation up with them. Where Ellis does, Ellis will talk to anyone. Ellis just wants to be friends with everyone and anyone. And it's so hard to explain to him, you can't do this. But we don't know what Sebastian's like. We don't know if he's like Ellis or if he's a quiet, mild lad. I get the impression from his family, his mother, that he's a quiet, mild one. And that's because he's got no friends. He don't go anywhere to see anyone. So it's, I feel so bad. Anyway, oh, was there anything else I wanted to talk to you about? Right um, no. I was hoping, two weeks since Sebastian Rogers was oh, reported yeah. missing. I was hoping that interview would have been before now, but it obviously isn't. So. It's, I can't get over the fact that they're still saying now that that front door was locked. How the hell did you get out there? Why aren't these, i tell you what, why aren't these reporters saying when they hear this thing about the doors being locked, well, how did you get out of the house then? Why don't they ask these questions? Like when she was going on about, oh, we just did our errands and we went about our normal business. Why didn't she come up to me and go, uh, so was you all together when you went out? Was you all together when you had your, your meal? You know what I mean? I'm not asking these questions. I just said, oh, so was you all together when you had that meal? And where was it you had the meal? Where was it you went to have this meal? And was you all together? There's two questions there. Like could have said, we went, no, we wasn't all together because my husband had gone to work or whatever. I mean, Sebastian, but they wouldn't, she wouldn't say Sebastian. She said, we would have then gone to wherever. But the, they're not asking these questions. And these are questions I can quite answer. It's not as if they've been told they can't answer them questions because why not? I was out in the public. I was out in the public, public would have seen them. So why can't I answer these simple little questions? And why all of a sudden changed what he was wearing from a sweatshirt, a black sweatshirt, like black trousers, black sweatshirt, to now black joggers with a stripe down. And sometimes these stripes give off, uh, can light up when a, a car light hits them. Or any light hits it, you can illuminate sort of thing. And then to a, from a, then from a, a sweatshirt to a, like a hoodie, then from a hoodie to like a, a long sleeve t shirt top with a logo on it. That's what we needed to know in the beginning. All right? But it, I'm with the father. He would not have left at home unless he didn't feel comfortable. That's the only reason he didn't walk out of the house. And for that, something was happening which he couldn't control. And that's why I keep going back to when they keep saying, we just want you home. You're not in trouble. What did he do? What did this poor lad do so badly that he's in trouble for? This lad is a lad that would sit in his bedroom, play with his toys, watch his tablet or laptop or whatever, uh, watch his TV, play with his games, do some building, a bit like my, my grandson. Right? So... What did he do so bad that he could be in trouble? But I will guarantee you this now, before I leave tonight, before I finish tonight, 
next interview they do, if they do another interview, if they do another interview, they will come out and I, that name, his name will be running off their tongue. Because that's something we've all picked up on. That they've not mentioned his name. Right? And anything else we picked up on, like the clothing. They'll probably have a reason for, well, we thought it was a hoodie beat, wasn't it? It's a black shirt. They'll have a reason for why they thought it was a hoodie. Well, it was only when we went through his clothes again that we realised it was this black top that he was wearing. They'll have a reason for it. Like tonight, they've come back and they've had a reason for everything. Right? Apart from when they said about going out and looking and he turned around and said, well, we're going by what the police have asked us to do and I can't divulge anymore. Why not? Why um, If the father's out there looking, why can't you go out there looking? That doesn't make sense. And by doing the interview with just your hands, showing how lovey-dovey you all are, because we're holding hands. Oh, look, everyone, we're holding hands. Give me a bucket to throw up in. Because you look even guiltier than you did when we seen your faces. She's too calm. She's on medication. She's way too calm. Two weeks now I've gone. And she's calm. Three hours ago, Nick posted a video of Sebastian. Oh, did he? Let me have a look. It'll be... Oh. Would you be on his channel? Yeah. Yep. Nick Ferris. Let's have a look, see if I've got the name wrong. Hmm. Mr. I think this is the one we've just seen. Hold on. Community came together for a prayer vigil. Dozens yeah. of people showed up wearing green. I can't find it. I'll put my various channel. New spiders in. No, still can't, still not showing anything. Let's go to home and see if it's on there. No, I'm not finding anything. I can't find it. Oh, that annoys me so much. News files, Miss Davis. No, I'm only getting 
the one we just say. Hmm. Hmm. No, I'm only getting the ones, um, it's already, I've already seen, I'm not getting any of them. And here, here, this girl here, another piece of whatever, she got off way too easy as well, way too easy. Um, I'm looking everyone to see if I can find this. No. He's another good one, Peter Hyatt. He's another good one. I'd, I'd say people go and subscribe to him. Go and watch him. He's a bad body language as well. Do you know I've got, I got like a little telling off today. I was on another YouTube channel. And I was talking about... Um, Was it Maggie? Yeah, Maggie Soto. And I commented a bit on there, like several times, and then they said something, and I just said, Did you see the video DD? You know, did you see DD video on the interview of her mother? I didn't say his name. I said, Is it on Facebook? Oh, for fuck's sake. Right, anyway, I didn't say name, I just said DD. Because everyone knows when they say DD who they mean. If you're in the YouTube thing, right? And then they didn't literally pull me up, they or single me out. They just come up then, one of them said, we don't mention other YouTubers on the chat, it can cause problems. I'm thinking, I didn't mention his name. I'd said D, D, two Ds, a D and a D. That could be in anyone. Didn't say his name. And I wasn't saying anything bad about him. I was just I was like, did you see his video on? And I, I kind of like got pulled up about it. I thought, for fuck's sake. His Facebook MG. In the, in the chat, I don't mind. <laughs> because if I find it on Facebook, then I'll bring it up on tomorrow. I'll do one. Oh, I can't do one in the afternoon. I'll have to be tomorrow evening. So I'll go out tomorrow. Um, but no, I will tell, uh, that is definitely that. I will, I will definitely say that next time they do an interview, if they do an interview, they will bring up his name. They will mention his name. Because that's like someone else we know. And every time they, they begin an interview or they say anything, the YouTubers will have their little say about it. And then next time they do an interview, they come up and they pick all these, everything these YouTubers have red flagged out on them. You know what I mean? Everything they've been red flagged up on those bringing into their conversations and he was literally just copying what we were telling them what we were saying we said oh well she couldn't have walked off next interview he come back and said yeah there's no way she just walked off you know what i mean she wasn't like that to walk off and then if people said um there's no way she was um kidnapped 
they changed their story to fit what the YouTubers were saying. To the point where the YouTubers were going to be, we knew what he was going to be saying in his next interview. So he's on their Facebook page, MG. Oh, I'm going to look for something else. On his Facebook. Oh, okay, let's have a look. Alright, let's go to Facebook. If I can find it, I'll show it before I log off. Uh, Facebook. Nick Berry is right there. Oh, get off. What the hell? Facebook. Nick Perez, five. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, it's not very long. It's only fifteen seconds. It's literally what we've just seen on that first interview we done. He showed you. Seth is the deputy to the Davidson County Sheriff's Office in the United. Exactly. Please, if anyone wants to help, but they can't get out there and search, find the, um, the page the GoFundMe page. I've lost the link. I'll have to find it again. There's a GoFundMe page. His sister has set it up. Sebastian's aunt set it up. And she set it up to help the father. Because while he's searching, he can't work. He's not working. And if he's not working, he's not getting any money. And bills have to be paid. And all this has to be paid. Everything. So it's managed to help him keep stay out there to keep searching. Right? It's not for motels or hotels because I should imagine he goes home every night and then comes back the next day. It's about an hour and a half away, I believe, or an hour away. So he just drive back and forth. It's to help him stay, come back every day and continue with the search and not have to worry about not having the money to pay this bill or to pay that bill because he isn't working. But MG, it's the same as what we've just seen on that other interview. It's only 15 seconds long. You know what I mean? This is what it's, it says. Um, Pablo. Right, I'll see if I can... I don't know if I can get in any closer. No. 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 Go away, Captain. Go away. I can't get any closer. But... It's on his Facebook page, Nick Berres, NC5. And he just says how he says custody of the king. He's very close to the boy. And you could tell that in the way he spoke on the phone call. Seth is a deputy with the Davidson County Sheriff's Office and has been out looking for his son. Now he's sharing new details, not only about the investigation, but about his son and what he thinks did or did not happen. Oh, I've got, I'm going to be up late tonight, aren't I? Because I've got to see this. Suffice to say, he does not believe Sebastian just walked up barefoot on his own and believes it's likely someone else is involved. Yep, we've been saying that ever since we found out that the dogs had lost all sense of him, that they couldn't find any sense of him, blood hands, everything, couldn't find nothing. 
We've all said there's no way he walked out of that house. As you see in the sound, he's emotional about it. Seth has also released home video of his son. You'll see the interview and video tonight on News Channel 5 at 6. MG, 6 o'clock their time. What time does it make it mine? Because I'm looking like 12 o'clock tonight. 12, 1 a.m. 12 to 1 a.m. this morning before I get to see that. Um, so some of you asked why I haven't interviewed with the stepfather and mother. Oh, I've asked. <laughs> I spoke with Chris Proudfoot at la length last week and was set to do an interview, but then he just stopped answering my calls or responding to my texts. Yeah. Because it's like, I'll tell you something else. Right? These, these, this guy's that stepfather. Right? If he don't like what Say there's a news reporter. It's not literally he isn't kissing the ground that he walks on. Then he won't have nothing to do with him. If he's not, if you've got a news reporter that is out there saying, look, this is what I feel, this is what I'm seeing, and all this stuff, it's not adding up, then he won't talk to that reporter. If you want an interview, you got to be, oh, I believe he's innocent. Oh, I'll kiss the floor he walks on. Get the feck out of here, because I won't do it. I won't bow down to no one. No one. I'm sorry, I can't get this any bigger. I wish I could. I don't know how I can. Right. Uh, we'll see the interview later, but I'm going to see that interview. Anyway, he did get into the spoke with Chris Pratt, but I heard about that and how he, he literally ghosted him. He's ghosted him. No idea why, but I respect the fact they are very busy and who they talk to is entirely up to them. No, I know why. It's because you're not kissing the ground they walk on. Well, the ground he walks on. Right. Because I've noticed the two interviews he has given. Well, even the first interview, it was to a woman. The first interview was a live on a YouTube channel, which is a run by a woman. The first interview was done by a woman. This interview was done by a woman. He will not do it by a man because he knows the men are going to ask him the hard questions. Well, please let me do an interview because I'm a woman and I ask the hard questions. Such as, what did you do with your son? You tell us how he's got out that door if he's locked. How come the dogs have lost door sense of him? You no know, sense of him outside. The only way he could go out of this house is by being carried out. You know what I mean? How come you know someone to change what he's wearing? My offer to interview still stands. I think all involved would want as much media as possible to keep Sebastian in the news. I will do that regardless. There's much more from my conversation with Seth Rogers I can share. Yeah. It goes into considerable detail where... Oh. Hold on. Okay. Oh, God. Right. Reagan, Downer, Red, Robinson, Cash, Robinson, Sebastian, Robbins, Joel, Romero, Ryan, Bradley, Carolyn, Bradley, Reagan, Dahlia, Red, Robinson, Cash, 
Robinson, Sebastian, Rogers, Joel, Romero, Ryan, Bradley, Sebastian, Bradley, Reagan, Dollar, Red, Robinson, Cash, Robinson, Sebastian, Rogers, Joel, Romero, Ryan, Bradley, Carolyn, how long ago that Red, Robinson, Cash, Robinson, Sebastian, Rogers, Joel, Romero, Ryan, Randy, Carolyn, Randy, Reagan, Dahlia, Red, Robinson, Cash, Robinson, Sebastian, Rogers, Joel, Romero, Ryan, Randy, Carolyn, Randy, Reagan. So when was how long ago was this taken now? How many weeks ago? Oh, graduation at middle school in Hengersonville last year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've got it. But I'll keep that. I'll save that somewhere. But that was a year ago when you went is graduating into middle school from middle school or whatever. But that was a proud moment for his dad, you know what I mean? As his, as his mother said, if he did after school clubs, his dad would be the first one there to watch him and things like that. You don't, um, you don't see to hear him talk about the interaction between Sebastian and the stepfather there. You know what I mean? It's like they went for the meal. Him and his mum went for that meal on Sunday, not the far stepfather. Well, thank you for that, M MG. You see it pop up on my screen and wow, what was that? <laughs> but, um, no, what was I reading in my mum? Yeah, what was it? Yeah, you yeah, had, no, not that, sorry. Oh God. So, but anyway, I, everyone, please, on Twitter, on YouTube, look out for that. As soon as I know, it's News Channel 5, Nick Beres, at 5 or 6 tonight. So please, keep an eye out for it. Because I know I will be, I'll be glued to my YouTube channels watching for someone to say go and live on this because then I watch it and then I'll stream it off there right but hopefully I'll be able to get the live stream myself I'll download it if I have to but I will I'll download it so then I'll know I've got it on my tab on my laptop here but but you're all thinking I'm on new background here. Yeah. I'll take this off. New background. <laughs> anyway, before we go any further, all right, please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that bell, comment, and share. We need this video out. Not just my video, any video you see with Sebastian in. Share it. Right? Because his name needs to be kept out there. Not just for his mum or his pieces or his stepfather. Right? 
but for his father. Because if he's found alive, then his father's going to have custody of him. I swear to God, he will. He'll get custody of him. Because I want to know why he did he, why he rang off. Right. But I, unless, the only thing I can think of is if he left, right, as his father would say, had said, the only reason he would leave that home on night time, if there's a situation in the household that he had no control of. You know what I mean? But then, if he's in his bedroom, that's what he... I probably think that was his safe place as well. So if he's in there, surely they wouldn't come into the, like. I won't tell Ellis off in the bedroom. In in their room, because I've got a spare bedroom which I call which is for the grandkids, right? And there's bunk beds in there, so my granddaughter sleeps on the bottom bunk. And my grandson should sleep on the top bunk. But nine times out of ten, he'll come into my bed. Right? Anyway, so they've got their room. And I won't tell him off in that room because that is his safe room. That's his happy place. If he's getting too... It's like if he's getting too much for him in here, in the living room. Like when his mum and dad's here and his sister's here and it's too much going on, that's where he goes to. He goes to that bedroom. And he'll get his bricks out or he'll go and lie on the top bunk and watch his tablet. That's his happy, his, com his comfort place, right? When he's here on his own, when it's just him, he uses my room and he uses his room as his comfort place. So if I tell him off, I don't actually tell him off in either of the rooms. I tell him off in the hallway or I tell him off in the kitchen, the living room. Because I don't want to ruin, take that, this was my safe place and now I'm being told off in it, away from me. I want him to feel that he's safe, he's happy. No one is going to hurt him, no one's going to shout at him, no one's going to tell him off. You know what I mean? So if ever he's got too much for him, that's where he can go. So people ask me how I get how I got a two bedroom flat. Because mine's uh through the government, right? And I said because I've told him I've got a grandson that needs his own room. Which I have. I've got two grandsons that need their own room. When my other grandson comes, he needs his own room where he can just go off and have his quiet time as well. So that is the room they go to. But anyway, so please keep an eye out for that interview tonight. Be interesting. I think there'll be a lot of people waiting to watch that interview. And I'll be back on tomorrow night, not tomorrow daytime. I've got to go out. But I'll be back on about, it all depends what time I leave my son's. Between 7 and 8 tomorrow night, I'll be back on. But, till then, I'll hit that again. Please, give this a like, comment and share. And if you really want, subscribe, it does help. Come and join me on YouTube. All those on Twitter, come and join me. And anyone on YouTube, go and join me on Twitter. Okay, because I post on both Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on here. I go on here live nearly every day, uh, apart from when I've got my grandkids there. And, um, but I post on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram every day. I do updates. So please, stay updated, go and join me on all those channels. What's the last comment? That's okay, MG. The kids have after school activities, so 
I understand. Anyway, I've got to go. Because it's gone 10 o'clock. And I need my bed. But I'm not going to go to bed until I've seen that interview. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. Till then. I've got to do a new one for the ending. I've got to do a new page for the ending. And I'll do that while I'm waiting. So thank you again. Please like, subscribe. It does help push the video out. Leave me a comment if you're on Twitter. Show your love on Twitter with the little heart, is it? Is it a heart you get on Twitter? So show some love for this video. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.